So most of you guys have probably heard to be a professional photographer, you have to shoot in manual mode, which is not really true. A lot of us use shutter priority, aperture priority at different times, depending on how quick we need to get there. So if you're new and you go out and you just turn on full manual mode, you really have no starting point. You need a starting point. So maybe this will help you out. If you go outside, let's say you're shooting pictures of your wife or your girlfriend or model, whoever it might be, let's set your camera to aperture priority. And then you take and dial your aperture down as far as it'll go. If it goes down to 1.8, go to 1.8. If it goes to 2.8, go to 2.8. Go as low as the camera will let you. Let the camera pick the shutter speed, but you want to make sure the, the shutter speed stays above 60 so you don't get a blur. Now, by doing that, your reference point you're picking the aperture. The camera is picking everything else. Some cameras will set the ISO for you automatically. Some cameras you'll have to set the ISO. So if you're shooting, say you're at 2.8 and you're at 60 and 60 is blinking or 2.8 is blinking, that means you don't have enough light. So you can turn up your ISO. Go up to the minimum amount. If you can go to 400 ISO, stop at 400. Don't go Keep your ISO as low as possible so you get the best quality picture that you can get without getting grain or noise in it. But by turning your camera to aperture priority mode, that'll give you a point to start with to build off of. So you can actually take that. You can take, say you go outside and you got your aperture set to 2.8 and the camera gives you the rest of the settings. Well, you can remember those settings. Let's say you're at 1 60th of a second, 2.8 ISO 400. That's just, I made those numbers up, so we're just going to use those. Once you see that those numbers work, you can turn your camera back to the manual setting. Set those numbers in your camera. Set them exactly the same. Go 60, 2.8, ISO 400. And then from there, you can play with it. If you want a faster shutter speed, you're just going to have to adjust your ISO or your aperture to get the faster shutter speed. But that gives you a starting point. Now, a lot of photographers on YouTube recommend aperture priority mode over shutter priority mode. I don't necessarily fall into that category. I know I just told you this example to use aperture priority. But that was because I want you to get the blurry background when you're shooting somebody's pictures and you get that through a low aperture. But if you're shooting, say you're shooting a wedding or an event or whatever it may be, I recommend shutter priority to start with because if you go to shutter priority and you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, or let's say you're shooting with a 70 millimeter, let's say you've got your 28 to 70 lens on there, 2.8, set your shutter to 1 80th of a second. That way you won't get any blur because you want your shutter to be equal to or more than the longest focal length on your lens so you don't get blur. So by putting it in shutter priority mode, you can go to 1 80th of a second and then just let the camera figure out the aperture and you can set the ISO accordingly. Keep it as low as possible, like I was saying. And then once you get the lighting figured out, you can go back to manual. Remember those numbers, that's your starting point. If you're staying kind of in the same lighting area, as you shoot, you can see the changes that you might need to make. You might shoot a picture if you move 10 feet, it might be a little bit dark. So you're gonna add one stop of light to it. Either, you know, drop your ISO, or, excuse me, raise your ISO up, you know, from 400 to 800 or cut your shutter down or open your aperture up further. So but that way you get a starting point. So you don't have to just turn on your camera in manual and go, oh my God, I don't know what to do with any of this. So give you a starting point. And once you've been doing it a long time, I'm well over 35 years, much closer to 40. I can pretty much walk outside and tell you what the settings would be without a camera in my hand because you've just done it so long. And, and you'll get that way too once you've done it long enough. Now, something else you can use that I highly recommend, a lot of people don't use these days, is a light meter. Now this works for studio flash and it will work for metering light and sunlight. You can take this, put it up by somebody's face, push the button, you'll input your shutter speed, your ISO, click the button and it will tell you the f-stop that you need to set it at. Now this will be about the most accurate way to get a reading. I think this is iconic. I think it's about $350, but if you're doing stuff and you're getting paid for it, it's highly worth it. Now through your camera, and I'm going to show you examples of this in a minute. Um, the last part of this video is going to be examples looking through the camera but once you get that shutter priority figured out and you're moving around and you're really close to your correct exposure as you go through you can change your shutter speed if you want to go up you know to 250 of a second say the bride's throwing the bouquet that you want to be up around 200th of a second um and you also want a rapid fire on that so that you get her arm going back you get the bouquet in the air and you get the girls catching it those are three shots you want to get all in the same thing her throwing it the bouquet in the air and the girls catching it. A lot of time you'll get the girls all diving for it. It looks pretty cool. For reference point, it does not mean you're not a professional photographer if you're shooting in shutter priority or aperture priority. Either one of those is fine. A lot of times I'll get to a place and I'll flip it on 
uh, shutter priority just so I can see kind of where we're at and then I'll go over to manual and adjust my settings from there. So you get your starting point from there. Inside your camera there is a meter and it'll be plus three and negative three and there'll be a little line below it and I'll show you guys in the back of the camera in just a second what it looks like. That is telling you whether your exposure is correct based on how your metering is set in your camera. I usually go spot meter because I'm more interested in the bride's face or whoever I'm shooting, I'm interested in their face. Um, if you meter the whole scene, you're going to get the sky, the ground, you're going to get a lot of variance. So I would suggest if you're shooting people, do spot meter and meter right off the face. The forehead is usually the best spot to meter from. But shooting manual, you will need a reference point. So that's the way I would suggest to you to go about getting your starting point is start in aperture priority or shutter priority. Now some of the new Canons have a new mode called FV mode. You can try that if you want. Um, I've used it some, but I've used shutter priority and aperture priority for so long that I really haven't used it a whole lot. But that is another option you have on the Canon. I know my Canon R6 has an FV mode and you can make multiple changes in it. What it is is it lets you set whichever one you want to set. If you set the ISO, it'll set the shutter and the aperture. And if you set the shutter, it'll set the aperture and the ISO and so on and so forth. So it's um, this is another way to get pictures. Um, but you want your exposures to be correct. And shooting digital, you're better off underexposing than you are overexposing. If you overexpose, you lose, you lose detail, especially in the whites. And it's really hard to recover whites, even if you're shooting raw. So if you have a choice between a little overexposure and a little underexposure, definitely underexpose your image with digital cameras. Now with film, it was the opposite. You wanted to overexpose with film, not underexpose. So with digital, underexpose, just a little half stop. Sometimes I'll underexpose a half a stop on purpose, just so I can go back in on raw and capture some of the detail. Now that's, that's a little bit technical. You don't have to really worry about that. If you're getting the correct exposure, you're good to go. Um, but again, set your meter to meter off the person's face if you're shooting that. If you want to start with a blurry background shooting a picture of somebody, go to aperture priority mode, set your aperture as low as it'll go. Let the camera set everything else, take the picture, you'll be fine. Then move it to manual and then you can play with your settings. If you want a higher ISO, say it's getting dark outside as you're shooting, you'll have to go, if you've reached the rock bottom on your shutter speed that you can hand hold it with, say at 1 60th of a second, um, with image stabilization and a little practice, you can probably take it down to 1 15th of a second. But if you're new, let's stick with 1 60th of a second. And if your camera only goes down to 2.8 and you're still getting dark images, you're gonna to need to raise the ISO. Now the newer cameras, like the Canon R6, you can shoot at 12,500 and hardly get any grain. And what grain you do get, you can take out and denoise in Photoshop. So you don't have to worry about ISO as much in the newer mirrorless cameras as you did in the older DSLRs. So be sure to use that meter in your camera that tells you whether you're three stops over, three stops under, or you're right on. And you can roll your shutter speed or your f-stop, whichever way you need to go. You can see the line move, and I'm going to demonstrate this in just a minute. So I'll show it to you, no worries. But again, it's important to remember, get your starting point. Keep your ISO as low as you possibly can for the best quality image. And once you get your starting point, you're take that over to manual, set it to the exact settings and play with it from there and see what you can get. You know, and as you're learning, you know, get creative with it. Uh, turn your shutter speed up crazy high, turn your aperture way down low, you know, or turn your aperture to F22 and get everything in focus. You can take and line up like Pepsi or Coke cans down your driveway, put one like every 12 inches and just shoot pictures of the first can and watch the rest of them be out of focus in the background. Or you can go up to F22 and shoot it and you'll have them all in focus. So just play around with it and see what you think and just practice them. The more you practice, the better you'll get. And it does take practice. It takes a lot of getting used to. And as you go, and you know, if you're shooting outside, you know, as you go, the longer you'll do it, you'll be able to walk outside and go, oh, I need to be at 200 at F8 at 125th of a shutter. So it just takes some time to get used to and learn. Just don't be scared of manual. If you get lost in manual and nothing's working right, just go back to either shutter priority, aperture priority, get those settings and then put them back into the manual and go from there. So let's see what this looks like on the back of the camera. Hey, and if we're helping you guys out, we'd really appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe. Check out the camera as I walk you through it. All right, so we're outside looking at a Japanese maple that's actually green at the moment, but it's normally red. But red Japanese maple. But anyway, you can see the viewfinder on the back. This is manual. It's set to 125th of a second at 1.8 at ISO 400. That's on manual. And as you can see, it's very overexposed. So to save ourselves some trouble, we're just going to dial this over to aperture priority. Now you see right there, it already jumped over and now we've got a good exposure. It's telling us F5 at ISO 400. So if we want to go lower than that on our aperture, we can take it down to 1.8 and you can see we're still staying in line with where we should be because this is the the meter I was telling you about that has the plus three minus three over and under exposed so 
even at 1.8 the camera has adjusted the shutter speed to be what it needs to be so we can take that setting 1 800th of a second right here's the shutter aperture at 1.8 says we're dead on with our exposure and our ISO is 400 so we can go to 1 800 we'll go over to manual we'll go to 1 800 1 8 and 400 now when we push the button it tells us we're back to a perfect exposure now if I'm back in manual and I want to change it let's say I want to up my shutter I can go up and you'll see it getting darker and darker and darker till finally it's just getting too dark and right here it tells us we are underexposed by one and a half stops so let's take that back to where it needs to be we're back at 1 800 1 8 of a second f 400 and it tells us right here we're where we need to be so I hope you're following this so now if we go to shutter priority we can do the same thing we'll take our shutter up to I'm on a tripod right now but if you're hand holding it I've got a 50 millimeter on there 1 60th of a second is fine so, and as you can tell, 1 60th of a second, the camera set it to f6.3. Our exposure is dead on and our ISO is 400. All right, so from there, um, it, you know, when you're first starting, this is program, this is the camera setting everything for you. It's shooting 160 f4 at ISO 400. You don't, you don't want to go that route because you don't have any way to make any adjustments to make a pretty picture. But this way we're telling it 1.8. Why do we want 1.8? We want a very low depth of field. So with this lens, isn't the perfect lens to show you depth of field, but if we focus on some of the front leaves there, by the time you see the print, the leaves on the back side of the tree will be out of focus, shooting at one eighth of a second. So this is your shutter. This is your f-stop. This right here tells you you are dead on on your exposure, and this is your ISO. And we are in aperture priority mode, AV. TV is shutter priority, and of course M is manual. So once you get that in manual, you can play with it. You can change your f-stop. Your I'm rolling the shutter speed right now. You're seeing it down to 1 25th of a second. That is way too high. So I'm gonna change my f-stop. Watch the picture come into, push the button. And we are just barely off. Okay, right there. Now we're back at 1 25th of a second at four and a half ISO 400. And we are dead on with our exposure, as you can tell by the meter. So just play with it. Don't be afraid. You're not gonna mess anything up. Just practice, 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 and you'll get the hang of it. I hope we're helping you guys out. And remember, hit subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.